Hello, all the attendees of the virtual ICC 2020. My name is Chia Wei Chang from Kyoto University in Japan. Today, I would like to introduce our experimental study of mangrove effects on the coastal protection. So mangroves as a kind of a coastal vegetation, especially in tropical and subtropical areas, have been drawing attention, especially since the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. It was proved that they are capable of dissipating stream wave energy, for example, like uh, tsunami and storms. And their functions on the reduction of coastal disasters were also pointed out in the later IPCC report in 2014. So here's a sketch showing the engineering function of mangroves. As we know, due to the climate change and the rising sea level, wave disasters are getting more uh, severe. And mangroves, along with the hardware protections, are able to uh, protect the coastal areas by damping out some wave energy. And of course, the mangroves have other functions against climate change, for example, re uh, by reducing the, the sediment erosions and so on and so forth. So mangroves have been recognized as useful approach in coastal protections. And there have been many, uh, many previous works studying the effects of mangroves on wave attenuation in laboratory experiments by using either, for example, simplified tree models or parameterized tree models. More recently, Maza et al. in 2017 and 19 conducted experiments by considering the specific feature of the man mangrove species, which are those uh, prop roots, the root systems. So from the previous studies, what we know so far is that mangroves are eco-friendly, they can damp out wave energy, but until now, there's still a lack of consensus about the quantification of mangrove effects. And besides, in reality, as you can see from these pictures, the tree structures of mangroves and their variation in fields are more sophisticated and need to be addressed properly in both numerical and physical modeling. And of course, the complex coastal process among multiple elements uh, uh, are still unknown. So our study was trying to consider more realistic mangrove structures in the experimental tests and try to provide our findings which can be contributed in the later development of numerical models. So as I mentioned, uh, we wanted to move a step forward and use more realistic tree models and see what we can get. So we did experiment, uh, experiments in two scales. We mainly focused on the investigation of vegetation resistance and the wave damping by the mangrove trees. And later in, in today's talk, I will, like, uh, I will focus on and present our results of the vegetation resistance. So about the model scale experiments, in order to bring something more realistic in the, in the laboratory, we actually reproduced a complex root, uh, mangrove root structure in our laboratory experiments by using a 3D, print, uh, 3D printer based on the 3D scanned image based on the uh, one by seven scale. And, and as you can see, this table shows some of the basic properties. And here's a sketch of the experimental setup. And we use different equipments like ADVs to measure the fluid velocity and, and wave uh, a force transducer to measure wave forces and, and wave gauges to measure wave evolution along with uh, along the, the entire model scale, model mangrove forest. So here you can see a video to demonstrate you the interactions of, of regular waves with model trees. We also did prototype uh, scale tests by using real tree, uh, where we actually shipped the real tree from the fields. So one of the main reasons to do the prototype experiments is that we wanted to test the flexibility and the behavior under extreme wave conditions, which was kind of the limitation of the model scale. And besides, the scaling effects have been discussed for a while, which still need to be answered. And here for prototypes tests, we, uh, well, because it's not possible to build up an entire forest, we focus on single tree condition. So as you can see, we ship the real tree from the fields back to the lab. And, and, this, and this is the 3D scan image, just give you an impression how complicated the prop roots can be. And likewise, we also use the pressure gauges and force transducer to measure the wave forces exerted on, on the mangrove tree. 
So here are uh, some videos to demonstrate you how the wave, regular waves interacting with uh, the real trees. So three different videos with three different incident conditions, uh, even with the, the breaking waves. So apparently the, mangrove, the real mangrove trees was flexible and not rigid, which should be uh, taken into account in our analysis and assessments. So in both sets of experiments, we measure force and velocity and waves. And one of the main objectives in this study was trying to figure out the mangrove induced resistance and how we can better model the mangrove effects in, in the numerical modeling. So that's recalled the Morrison type equation. Morrison equation has been widely applied to model vegetation effects in, in previous studies. It shows that the wave forces can be divided into two components drag force and inertia force. In, in our experiments, the measurements, in, uh, measurements include the forces, the fluid velocity. The key point is that, can we find out the relationship between the force coefficients and the wave conditions? In other words, how can we determine the values of, of CD and CM? So, and there's another thing should be noted is that the, the frontal area and the submerged volume are both considered in this equation. As you can see in the lower part of these slides, um, take the model scale tree, for example, the frontal area and submerged, vol uh, submerged volume are both increased when approaching to the root system. And this is very different from the homogeneous or simplified tree models like cylinders. Assuming that the, coastal, uh, assuming that the force coefficients are constant, um, so with all the measurements we have, the for, uh, forces, fluid velocity, we can start estimating the values of CD and CM. And here in the lower part of these slides, I present two cases with different incident conditions for regular waves. And these two figures are the snapshots of the estimated forces and the measurements. As you can see, our estimation are pretty reasonable comparing with the major data. And for our testing conditions, and even for a longer wave, which is in the right, uh, right, co uh, right column, the inertia forces are still not, uh, even though the inertia forces is, uh, uh, are, are smaller compared with the drag components, but still not negligible. So uh, once we, uh, we estimate all the co uh, coefficients, we put them together, and we use the traditional way to define the dimensionless flow parameters in uh, uh, the Reynolds number and KC number by using the so-called DBH, the trunk diameter at breast height at, as the length scale. Then we are able to plot, uh, we are able to find out the relationships between the, uh, the first coefficient, for example, CD with both Reynolds number and KC number. We can also plot the fitting curve and and, uh, and we found that most of the estimation are within plus and minus 50% of the fitting, uh, fitting empirical formula. In the upper plot, we also compare with the experimental data reported in WHO et al. in 2014, in which their experiments were conducted using cylinders. So the diameter of their cylinders were act, uh, was actually the same as the, uh, the DBH of our 3D, scan, uh, 3D printed tree models. So as you can see, our fitting curve covers their data range uh, pretty well, although that we got more scattered data, more scattered uh, estimated coefficients because of the root system, which has impact on the velocity measurements. We also have the relationships between the inertia coefficients versus KC number. By plotting these two dimensionless parameters, it appears that for uh, uh, it appears that for our regular wave uh, testing conditions, the drag and inertia uh, effects are actually comparable, which means that it should be more precise to take both drag and inertia effects into account instead of ignoring uh, either, either one of them. So in addition to the regular waves, we also test the transient waves by generating a solitary wave in our uh, experimental tests. And use, uh, using similar approach, the parameterization of the coefficient CD and CM can be found, which shows a relatively constant within the range of Reynolds number. And here show, uh, in the lower part of these slides, I showed an example of the comparison between the estimated forces and the major data. So for our experimental tests, we confirmed that the inertia forces are, are relatively small when comparing with the drag, for, 
drag force. And we know that in most of the studies, we, we know that it was assumed uh, for a solitary wave or, uh, or extremely long wave like tsunami, the inertia forces is, is actually negligible. But from our tests here again, it would be more precise if we include the inertia component in our analysis, especially at the beginning part. And overall, from our tests, from our tests, the estimation agree with the data pretty well if we focus on the maximum value. So from our current results, reasonable relationships were found between the force coefficients and pro flow parameters. And these empirical formulas will also be very useful in future parameterization of mangrove effects in numerical modeling. Both regular waves and transient waves were tested with reasonable agreement. And here I only show, well, although I only showed the experimental results for model scale tests, but the comparison with the, with the prototype scale are still ongoing and we expect that that can bring some contribution to answering the, um, the, scaling, uh, the scaling effects. And as I presented, you can see that the flexibility of, of a real mangrove tree may become more important during extreme wave conditions and should be considered in our analysis. And generally, our tests comparing with the uh, previous studies, we actually pre-produce the complexity of the real root structure in the lab, in our lab experiments, we, and instead of using idealized or, or simplified or artificial tree models. And there's, an, and there's another thing that should be included in our current and future work is that we have to consider the variety of mangrove root structure as we observe in the fields. So for that part, I would like to very briefly just show you the field work that uh, uh, we are currently conducting. In the past year, we conduct several field surveys in, in different areas, either uh, a forested and natural mangrove areas. So in our field work, we, uh, we measure the correct, correct uh, characteristic parameters of mangrove root morphology, the tree height, for example, the tree height and some representative diameters. We also use a 3D scanner, laser scanner to capture the detailed structures. And we are trying to establish a more comprehensive parameter uh, data set, which can be used in future numerical modeling. We still have a lot of work ongoing and hopefully we will be able to present all of them in either future conferences or our future publications. And this is my talk today and thank you very much.